welcome everyone. Thank you all for coming. Um, just to kind of let everybody know that we do have two restrooms. The gentlemen's is on the, the left and the women's is on the right. Um, so I welcome you and I am going to introduce Pastor Sarah Semler-Smith to please uh, give us the invocation. A verse from Psalm 119. All things come to an end, but the teaching of the Lord has no bounds. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, look up with favor upon these graduates and all who have completed another year of learning and growth. Give them courage, patience, and vision as they go their way. And strengthen us all in our vocation of joyful stewardship in the world and of service to others and the common good for the sake of your whole creation, now and forever. Amen. You can be seated. We are learning that uh, after a pandemic, it takes a little bit to get back into the rhythm of things in person. And it's such a delight to see us all together in this room today. It is a great joy, and it is my distinct privilege to welcome you all to Finlandia University's 2022 commencement ceremony. My name is Philip Johnson. I serve as president here at Finlandia, founded at Suomi College by Finnish Lutheran immigrants in 1896 on land ceded by the Anishinaabe people in the Treaty of 1842. We here at Finlandia seek to honor and respect the sacred and enduring kinship of the Anishinaabe people with this land on which we gather this afternoon. And we at Finlandia University reject ongoing injustices of colonization, and we bear witness to the dignity of all indigenous peoples. This afternoon, I want to say thank you to members of the Finlandia University Board of Trustees. I know that there are some that are sitting here, and I think there are others scattered about. I want to thank you today for your steadfast and faithful love for this institution. For your wisdom, for your tenacity, and for your unwavering conviction that the world desperately needs Finlandia graduates. For you faculty, I again thank you this year for advancing Finlandia's commitment to scholarly rigor and academic excellence. To staff and administrators who are scattered about in this room today, I thank you for advancing Finlandia's commitment to accompany the whole student toward a whole life. What a privilege. And to you family, so moms and dads, brothers and sisters, husbands and wives and partners, grandpas and grandmas, aunts and uncles, and all the rest of you family folk, thank you for loving and supporting your graduate, these graduates, through the highs and the lows that come with earning a college degree. And I thank you especially for demonstrating that very love and support with your presence here today. Today we remember the late Board Emeritus Ray Hervenen. Ray Hervenen died this past December at the age of 93. Finlandia University's College of Health Sciences bears the name of Ray and Peg Hervenen, 
in recognition of Ray's three plus decades of distinguished trustee and trustee emeritus service and the extraordinary generosity of his family. We are so grateful to Ray and to his entire family for having chosen to live generously with Finlandia for four generations and counting. Now the Herman and family can't be with us in person today. So I ask you to join me in thanking the Ray Hervenen family for a legacy of generosity and leadership. And to you, class of 2022, I thank you for what you have brought to Finlandia. I thank you for excelling in your disciplines. I thank you for staying the course. And for some of you, that meant five semesters of study during a global pandemic. And I pause to say a special thanks to our nursing students and our nursing graduates who helped us be a healthier campus and a healthier community through it all. I thank you for encouraging each other along the way. Finlandia is simply better because of you. And so I thank you. And all of us here gather today to celebrate you. So congratulations. And again, welcome, everyone. Each year, <clears throat> excuse me, each year Finlandia University's Academic Achievement Committee selects an outstanding student for, from the graduating class who has the distinct honor of delivering the con commencement address. <clears throat> excuse me. The student representative recogni is recognized not only for his or her outstanding academic achievement, but also for his or her involvement on the campus and in the community. This year's representative impressed the committee for these very reasons, and also because of his commitment to the university and our students outside of the classroom. Artie Puntus came to Finlandia from Belarus. His academic achievement in nursing has set the bar for his classmates, earning a 3.9 cumulative GPA. He has served on the student senate, most recently as senate president, served as the VP of Student Nurses Association, and was instrumental in helping us return to an in-person, although socially distanced, in uh, commencement ceremony last year. His commitment to a positive student experience for all students has not gone unnoticed. Please give a warm welcome to our 2022 student representative, Artie Puntes. There's so many faces. Wow. Uh, oh. Okay, we're solid. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm a little nervous. I'm not going to lie for this one. But um, first of all, um, on behalf of from the entire 2022 class, I wanted to say a huge thanks to our faculty and staff who are present here. Um, you guys engraved the knowledge in our minds throughout all of those four years. You guys supported us in school and outside of school and guided I and guided us on the right path. So that's why we say thank you. First of all, if you see all of these beautiful parents over here, I wanted also on the behalf of the entire class say to all of you, thank you. You were here with us from the very beginning and you were supporting us from the really young age and giving us everything we need. You were there when we, when we hit our lowest points or when we excel in wherever we do. So you were always here for us. And I think now it's our responsibility to repay all of you guys for all of your kindness you've done for us. So, thank you. 
so I actually wanted to talk today a little bit as of this event as of a beginning because now we're going to start a new chapter in our lives and we're gonna path our ways in a little bit over here but the real life from what I've heard is not easy <laughs> paying taxes having responsibilities but a lot of people look at those responsibilities um, negatively like I'm, I specifically talk about adversity but what's important to realize is when we deal with obstacles and adversity it pushes us out out of the comfort zone and that's when we develop our coping skills and problems so problem solving skills as well and that's how we become better, better human people and that's how we develop both emotionally and physically so when I was a little kiddo my dad used to tell me the tale about two stones and the tale is about two stones that were really close friends and they lived on the shore right next to the sea and one of the days the storm hit and took one of the stones out and far away in the sea while the other ones just barely stayed on the shore by scrapping to the rotten ship. So as the storm passed away, that stone found new friends, the little lumps of clay, and he started telling them how hard the, his survival time was that he had such a hard time surviving through the storm and they listened to him. And then he started feeling pretty good about himself and felt like a hero. And as the time passed on, he was laying on the, on the shore, getting a little cracked. When one day, all of a sudden, the storm hit again. And out of the storm, out of nowhere, the beautiful, brilliant Flint came out. And he started saying, hey, buddy, how are we doing? And the cracked stone couldn't realize him because he looked completely different. And the Flint replied, he said, remember all the days we spent on the shore? And he was like, oh, now I remember you. Like, yeah, you're a good friend of mine. And then the Flint told him about all the storms he had to go through, all the difficulties out there in the sea. And he offered the cracked stone to come up and join him in his journey. But both the lumps of clay and the cracked stone were so scared of it, so they politely rejected. And then the Flint jumped back in the, sh in the, in the ocean and swam away. And this conversation left both the, the lamps of clay and the other stones speechless and at some point the, break the broken stone broke the silence and said yeah you know he got lucky and he got arrogant and I was risking my life for him there is no justice in the world and the lamps of clay agreed that there is no justice in the world so when I was a kid I, am I interpreted this tale as people who go through so much adversity in the, in, in the life, they develop certain skills. And all the successful people always have to go through very responsible and really hard times from time to time. And it is really important to look at the adversity and obstacles as a positive thing because that makes us better people and makes us more confident at the end. And another thing I wanted to talk about is mental barriers. We as human species really want to set the limits on ourselves. And there was one study done when they would use a fish and the aquarium with water and they would put the fish in the aquarium and then they would use like a piece of glass that would separate the aquarium in half and then as the fish was put in the water they would put their glass and the fish would try to swim on the other side but this fish really couldn't because there was a glass of there was a transparent glass so after the first day the fish wasn't even trying to swim on the other side and when they took the glass out this, the fish never dared to swim on the other side again. And if we think about it as in real life, we all tend to set the limits for our own mind. We all think that something is impossible, our goals. However, what I learned best for myself, when we have a specific goal, even if it's potentially unreachable in the beginning, if we just start putting the real effort into it, I think we can achieve a real success by doing so. And, that's, and that experience just shows that. And the last thing I wanted to mention, my fellow classmates, if you look at the person on your right and the person on your left, please remember those faces. It is my honor to represent such a wonderful class because all of them are just amazing. Anyone could be over here. They're so well-rounded. Please stay in touch after graduation. Don't part your own ways. Stay connected. Develop those friendships because all of you made my experience in Finlandia unique. So thank you guys for that.
Thank you, Artie. Okay. <clears throat> so again, each year, the Finlandia Board of Trustees nominates a faculty member for a Distinguished Teaching and Service Award. In recognition, oh, in recognition of receiving this award, the faculty member receives a medallion as a symbol of this honor that they will wear to commencement and additional university events. This year, in, in recognition of outstanding service to the Finlandia students throughout his tenure here at Finlandia, the University Board of Trustees awards the Distinguished Faculty Award to Dr. Richard Gee, Associate Professor of Criminal Justice. Dr. Gee. Well, our keynote is going to have to follow uh, Artie's act. I don't know what that's going to be like. When you ask Vance Black Fox to tell his story, as I did while we shared breakfast earlier this week, you may hear him use the phrase, out of order. What he means is that especially in his earlier years, Leadership roles repeatedly sought him too early, ahead of an acceptable age for such. His age in life and his role to play in it were often out of order. And indeed, there is something perhaps out of order when a 13-year-old is convinced that he is ready to take charge of a national church body. Some of this he blames his on his loving and wise mother. But Vance's story brings something deeper to this notion of life lived out of order. Something not having to do with the sequence of life events, but rather the substance of one's life. The calling that has chosen Vance leads him from time to time, or perhaps almost all the time, to live a little out of order, to think, act, and feel contrary to those social, political, and religious forms of the ordered that continue to diminish our shared humanity. But this is what happens when one is called into the necessary and messy work of truth saying, of human justice, and of community healing. Vance has been with us this week on campus to invite Finlandia, when justice, love, and truth require it, to live a little out of order, to be out of order for the sake of the neighbor, for the sake of our world. And perhaps then and only then can a more authentic and life-giving reordering of human relationships take root and grow. A citizen of the Cherokee Nation, a national thought leader in matters of indigenous theology and history, a graduate of Lutheran higher education, a truth teller, a healer, and one who has embraced life just a little out of order. Please help me welcome Vance Black Fox, Finlandia University's 2022 commencement keynote speaker. Let me find the mute button so you can hear me. We are not on Zoom. Amen. Osio Chanali, Kalanchi Dawado, 
My name is Galanchi. My English name is Vance Black Fox. I'm a citizen of the Cherokee Nation, and I am the son of Anita, the grandson of Sharon, the great-grandson of Oklahoma, the great-great-grandson of Bertha, the great-great-great-grandson of Anna, and the great-great-great-great-grandson of Sarah, and the list goes on. To President Philip Johnson, Pastor Sarah Simler Smith, the Board of Regents, faculty and staff, family, friends, and of course, our VIPs, the very soon to be graduates of Finlandia University this year in 2022. I want to say wado, gracias, miigwech, kietos, thank you for welcoming me here to Finlandia University and for the honor of giving the commencement address for all gathered, but especially for you graduates. Oh yeah, hi mama, she's watching from home. I'm so pleased to be able to be here on the land of the Anishinaabe people, more specifically the Keweenaw Bay Indian community. So pleased to hear of all the incredible things that this university is doing, the conversation that has begun through your social, social justice committee, as well as through your board of regents and into the president's office to acknowledge the need to acknowledge the people who are here before you, to begin honoring the stories of the indigenous peoples who reside on this land and care for this land for thousands upon thousands of years, almost time immemorial. And then what's next? The challenge and the question that has been asked of many people to each other here on this campus and then to me, what can we do next? What more can we do? Well, I have a very long list. But the conversation must continue here in this place, this very special place that has come, become to be known as Finlandia University, producing quality, educated, lovely, beautiful, faithful people who are going out into the world once again to make an even greater impact on those who they come in contact with, build relationship with, serve, and love out in the world. And so I look forward to hearing the story of Finlandia as they continue the conversation and determine what's next beyond that land acknowledgement. And I hope to be a part of those conversations because they are exciting ones indeed. And then I think about the importance, and I, I just have to stop real quick because I'm like, dang it, Artie, he took my speech. I was gonna tell the same parables. <laughs> and now I have to rethink what I wanna say but he did a fantastic job. And yes, be nervous, Artie, I'm nervous, it's okay. You're in good company. But what are the stories that we need to be telling? What are the stories of Finlandia University that you're gonna take with you as graduates? Parents, guardians, friends, loved ones, what stories we take from today as you share uh, the accomplishment of your loved one wearing blue today out in the world? What stories will you share with generations to come that also seek to be educated, whether it be here at Finlandia or in your high schools and elementary schools back home? How do we inspire through our stories? Once upon a time, um, I was younger than I am now. No, I'm not 28, President Johnson. But once upon a time, I, went as a young, I was a young person. I believe I was about 12 or 13 years old. And I was a little bit of an overachiever, if you can imagine, considering my introduction. And I was being awarded with some of my fellow students from Oaks Mission High School um, at the nearby university at an awards assembly that was hosted by the Cherokee Nation. The Cherokee Nation every year presents awards to young people at certain ages called the Trail of Tears Awards. It's for students who have accomplished um, some um, um, beautiful achievement in their schooling or in their, whether it be academics or whether it be uh, athletics or some other achievement that needs to be recognized and they're nominated by their school's leadership. And so I was one of those in my seventh grade year. And the speaker that year just happened to be a woman by the name of Chief Wilma Mankiller. Now you laugh at that name, but it's a traditional name. 
And this woman is one of the most powerful women in the world, or at least she was before her passing, and still continues to impact in great ways. But yes, man killer is a traditional name, if you know what I mean. But Ms. Chief Woman Mankiller was the first chief of a large federally recognized tribe and the first female chief in the modern day of the Cherokee Nation. She was bigger than life. And even by the time I was in the seventh grade, I'd known of her leadership from the time I was even younger. She was powerful. And to hear her speak was a big deal. And so those of us who were gathered in the auditorium that looked very similar to the one that we're gathered in today quieted ourselves as she began to tell her story about her journey from her little bitty town in northeast Oklahoma, having no running water, the poverty that she experienced, and then her move to the big city, Oakland, San Francisco, and in into her work being an activist on behalf of indigenous peoples all around the world, but in particular in the Bay Area, and then her journey back to Cherokee Nation as she got older to raise her daughters one of whom was one of my best friends, Gina, to raise them to also be leaders in the tribe. Chief Woman Mankiller did, in fact, become chief of our nation, and at that point when she was speaking, was the chief. And at the end of her beautiful speech and her story, the story that she so graciously shared with us that day, she invited four young people from the crowd to come up to the stage and share a bit of their story. Now, Artie, I don't know about you, but my heart's beating a little faster. I've spoken a few times since that seventh grade year, and my heart was about to beat out of my chest. I was shaking a little bit. Do I get up? Do I go? Do I get up? I'm called to be a leader. The church has already said that. My community's already said that. My teachers already said that. Is it my turn? Oh, my God. <laughs> and I get up from my chair. I'm sitting about right over there. And I make my way to the stage with the three others who were brave enough to get up, all of whom were in high school, and myself. And I share a little bit of my story about why I'm proud to be Cherokee. I don't remember what I said. I was too nervous. <laughs> but the point was is that I got to share my story. Someone had invited me into that moment as a very early age to share who I was and why I was proud of it. One of the reasons I'm proud is because for some of you who have heard of the Trail of Tears before this moment, you know that 16,000 Cherokee people, my tribe, was marched, forced marched by the federal government and their military from our homelands in what, was known, what is now known as Georgia, Tennessee, and North Carolina to Indian Territory in what is now known as Oklahoma. Out of those 16,000 people, 8,000 died on the trail. I am proud to be a Cherokee because since that march, the Cherokee Nation has become, yet again, one of the most powerful tribes in the world, in this nation in particular. There are others who are also very powerful and very strong, very proud. The Cherokee Nation immediately began to rebuild. And they built a university, one for women and one for men, the first university for women the east of the west of the Mississippi. They reformed their government, had written constitutions that mirrored the one, the one they had before they were forced march. Yes, they had a constitution as a nation, even though, we were, even though the federal government ignored it and marched us anyway. That resilience, that strength, that desire to continue to build on their communities and how they were to be in existence for the sake of not themselves, but for the sake of the seven generations of Cherokee people that were to come after them. I'm in that seventh generation. And so my job is to remind folks, young Cherokees in particular, but you too, of that march, of that trail of tears, and of the resilience that indigenous peoples have. But I call upon you now. I call upon you to think about what your story is. Graduates in particular, what is your story? At the beginning of this speech, I just read off the five names of the women who come before me, my, grand, my mother to my grandmothers, but I know my generation, 16 generations back on two sides of my family. I know not only their names, but I know where they came from. I know who their people were. I know some of their stories. 
My charge as a gift to them is to tell their story. And so I ask you, when you think about your story, whether it be about your stories in the seventh grade, about your basketball game, when you hit the game-winning shot, I've done that before, over Pastor Sarah at seminary once. <laughs> I think I just made that up. But. <laughs> but whatever story that might be, what story are you telling? And then how do two very important characters make their way into the story you're telling about yourself? One, how do your ancestors make their way into that story? How do your faculty, your teachers from back home, how do they make their way into that story? And then, how might Jesus make their, his way into your story? And then, finally, what is stopping you from telling that story? Further, I want to ask you and challenge you to remember that each of you have an indigenous heritage. At some point in time in your family's bloodline, your people too were indigenous. Probably not from Turtle Island or North America, but your families too at some point came from an indigenous place. How do you learn, even if you don't know who those people are, what that indigenous story might have been? How do you remember through your blood memory what it might have been like for them to care for the earth, to care for Mother Earth in a way that is preparing it not for themselves to live day to day alone, but for the next seven generations? How do we live a life that's selfless? And how do we live a life that tells a story that's different than the one that we've been telling on this earth in the last 500 years for the sake of those who are gonna be telling stories about us seven generations from now. So what story will you be telling? I hope that you'll be telling the story of your experience of Finlandia. I hope that you parents again will be telling the story of how proud you were the day, and, and friends and other loved ones, how proud you were the day that your loved one graduated from this fine institution. But I also hope that as you depart from this place, you'll think about what will be the story that others tell about you beyond today. I am truly honored to be able to be here again on Anishinaabe land at a place that is now called Finlandia University, a sacred place for many people. I'm honored to be here with you graduates and I'm excited, I'm so excited to hear one day the story that you'll be telling and the story that will be told about you. But in all that you do, anything that you find yourself doing, in the, whether it be in the, um, the, the, the nursing of people, the going on to graduate school, the raising of families, the being a storyteller, being a coach, whatever that might be, I hope that in all that you do, and that in all the stories I hear about you, that you will be kind. Kind to Mother Earth, kind to your relatives, kind to your neighbors, and kind to yourself. Wado, 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 forgive me this time to share a little of my story and hopefully, hopefully, set myself up to hear incredible stories about you in the future. Thank you. Enough for what everyone came for. Will the associate degree candidates please stand? <laughs> Mr. President, these students have completed all requirements for the associate degree. I'm pleased to present them to you now at this time for the conferring of the degree. By the authority 
vested in me by the Finlandia University Board of Trustees and upon the recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon each of you the associate degree with all its rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Please be seated. Will all the bachelor's degree students please stand? Mr. President, these students have completed all requirements for the bachelor degree, and I am pleased to present them to you at this time for the conferring of the degree. By the authority vested in me by the Finlandia University Board of Trustees and upon the recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon each of you the bachelor degree with all rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Please be seated. Graduates, when your degrees are called, please rise and proceed to the stage. For those of you receiving dual degrees, please come up when you when where you're seat with the the cohort in, with whom you're seated. Okay, I'll get that out somehow <laughs> or another. This is the first year we've actually done this. I know. <clears throat> okay. Um, I also would like to announce that this year's commencement is being live streamed and so for those who are watching at home we will be announcing all graduates whether they are here physically or not as many of them will be watching this ceremony at home with their loved ones. Okay so we're going to start with the associate degree candidates so with the associate degree candidates please stand and proceed to the stage. With the Associate of Applied Science and Criminal Justice, Megan Corrigan. The Associate of Applied Science and Physical Therapist Assistant, Kyle Brian Berryman, magna cum laude. Billy Lee Brunk. Jackson John D'Augustine, cum laude. Tam Din, cum laude. <laughs> Taven Filizetti. <laughs> also receiving a dual degree, a Bachelor's of Business Administration in Healthcare Management. Matthew Leonard Peterson, also receiving a dual degree, a Bachelor of Arts in Liberal Studies. <laughs> Taylor Telerico, cum laude, also receiving dual degree, a Bachelor's of Business Administration in Sports Management. Gabrielle Voison, cum laude. Zachary Wickman. Also, a dual degree, Bachelor's of Business Administration in Healthcare Management. Associate of General Studies, Riley Ann Burton, Alpha Lambda Delta Honor Society. Adriana. Rose Geminani, 
Johnny Piedela, Brianna Alexis Sari, and Antonio Ryan Sandefur Hartfeld. Okay, please be seated. Will the Bachelor of Arts students please stand and proceed to the stage? Bachelor of Arts, Art Therapy, Jillian Yvonne Foster. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts, Criminal Justice, Haley Jo Bianucci. Caitlin Marie Brown. John Wilmer Brundage, summa cum laude, Alpha Lambda Delta Honor Society and Sampo Society. Jeremy Michael Hookie. Blake A.C. Rowden. Shane Catherine Valdarski. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts, Liberal Studies, Mariah Berlin Austin. Jamie McFarland, magna cum laude. Lucas Edwin Vick. Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Rayanna Bain. Jacob Thomas Clark. <laughs> Dylan Robert Pavala, summa cum laude and Sampo Society. <laughs> Brianna Elise Portis, Summa Cum Laude, and Sampo Society. Kristen Marie Cervetas. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts Sociology, Maylee Rose Brooks, Summa Cum Laude.
Frenette Hernandez Ramirez, Alpha Lambda Delta Honor Society. You may be seated. Will the Bachelor of Business Administration candidates please stand and proceed to the stage. Bachelor of Business Administration Accounting, Carson Rosemary Osterman. <laughs> Lee Edward Piedla. Anders Yari Sarla, Magna Cum Laude, Sampo Society. Michael James Stuber, Cum Laude. Bachelor of Business Administration, Art Management, Skylar Lancor. <laughs> Bachelor of Business Administration, Healthcare Management, India Marie Charles. Jaden Danielle Matthews. Victoria Nagy, Magna Cum Laude Sampo Society. Brianna Verhoeven. Master of Business Administration, International Business, Osvaldo Cruz. <laughs> Kevin T. Danks, Summa Cum Laude. <laughs> Master of Business Administration, Management and Entrepreneurship. McEwen Christopher Stapleton, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Bachelor of Business Administration Marketing, Noah M. Reisenen, Cum Laude. River Jordan Thomas Shoemate. <laughs> Bachelor of Business Administration Sports Management, Sheridan James Brady. Joshua Eve.
Christian Frederick. Frankie Garcia. Hunter Thomas Kraus. Bradley St. Port. Tyler Dale Watongwa, summa cum laude, Alpha Lambda Delta Honor Society, Sampo Society. Please be seated. Will the Bachelor of Science candidates please come forward, please stand and Proceed to the stage. Bachelor of Science, Biology, Rebecca Helen Lilly, Alpha Lambda Delta Honor Society. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Addie Norma Budzinski, Magna Cum Laude, Alpha Lambda Delta Honor Society. David John Carlson, summa cum laude, Alpha Lambda Delta Honor Society. <laughs> Dylan David Farmer, summa cum laude. Jerry Lynn Freeman, magna cum laude. <laughs> Bailey Ann Froberg, summa cum laude. <laughs> Harley Marie Froberg, magna cum laude. Daria Joy Goen, yeah. cum laude. Yeah. Dylan Christopher Harden, cum laude. Malone May Hebert, magna cum laude, Alpha Lambda Delta Honor Society. Sarah Ann Johnson. Emily Rose Josephine Lawrence. Taylor Locke. <laughs> Catherine Rose Lohman, summa cum laude. <laughs> Jay 
Jacob Allen Martin. Courtney Mayo, Magna Cum Laude. Casey Marie Leco, Magna Cum Laude. Christy R. Monio. Summa Cum Laude. Caitlin Elizabeth Plesowitz. Summa Cum Laude. Artie Puntas. Summa Cum Laude, Alpha Lambda Delta Honor Society, Sampo Society. <laughs> we'll make sure he gets it. It's his alumni notice. <laughs> Taylor Lynn Sari Cum Laude. Clearly, we didn't secure those well enough. Frankie Jane Stuckel, cum laude. Erica Christine Tollefson, magna cum laude, Alpha Lambda Delta Honor Society. Haley Ann Wright, magna cum laude. <laughs> Bachelor of Science Psychology, Kylie M. Dene. Marcus Richard Gloss, with a dual major in criminal justice. Will all graduates please stand? You may now move your tassels from the right to the left. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Finlandia University's class of 2022. Congratulations. Will everyone please rise for the benediction? I realize as I was standing up here, I have one of the best seats in the house. I see the looks of pride on the faces of family, of fellow classmates, of our faculty. What a blessing it is to be together by Jan Richardson. This is a blessing called In the Leaving. In the leaving, in the letting go, let there be this, to hold on to at the last. The enduring of love, the persisting of hope, the remembering of joy, 
the offering of gratitude, the receiving of grace and the blessing of peace. So receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God give you the grace never to sell yourself short. Grace to risk something big for something good. Grace to remember the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. So may God take your minds and think through them. May God take your lips and speak through them. May God take your hearts and set them on fire. May God look on you with joy and give you peace. Amen. Now go in peace. God goes with you. Thanks be to God.